Hi, welcome to a great cow basic demonstration. So this is going to be a relatively quick demonstration uh, just to show you one method, one method, there are many methods of a programming a microprocessor using um, a PIT kit 3. So it's a question I get asked, I've got another email on it this morning, so um, I'm, I've decided I'll put together a quick video of, of, of how, to, how I do it and a method of doing it okay so let me just show you what I've got I've got a couple of things on all set up here um, I'm just going to start up a camera so that you can see there's a pit kit next to me I'm going to do some programming I'm going to install some software but essentially we're going to do it live okay all right so here we have a pit kit and we have a uh, this is a microchip um, pit kit 2 low pin count demo board okay and um, we're going to sort of program that to make sure it works. Okay, so what have I got to show you? Right, Num number one is we're going to install the PitKit 3 software that is not installed on this computer. So I'm going to go to the distribution we put out um, in April 2015, and I can see a folder called PitKit 3. I open that, and in there I can see a folder that is called Application Setup. So if I open that up, I will install a PitKit 3 piece of software on my computer. I will read the um, license. And there's, I've read the license. I will uh, agree to that and I will install that software. So that's installing the drivers, etc., onto my computer. Um, if I look in here now, I can see I've got a new icon called PitKit 3. I click on that and I'll accept that. And I can see that the PitKit has just gone live and it's got no device found. Well, that's not surprising because it's not plugged in. Okay, so we're going to plug that in. And so you can see it. I'll put it on a piece of white paper. And if I then come into here and I go Tools, there's a couple of things I need to point you to. You need to be able to, there are two modes in the PitKit 3. There is a two, two, two ways of operating this thing. Uh, this one is currently operating as a um, in a standalone mode. I've actually got another one which I hadn't planned to show you, but I'll go and get another one. Another pit kit. I've got a, a number of pit kits from Microchip. Uh, I'm going to have another one here. I'm actually going to plug this one in just to show you that there's different modes. We'll see what this one's actually plugged. We'll see what mode this is in. It's just, uh, I'll just do a check communication on that. This one is in MP, MP Lab mode. So to revert that from MP Lab, lab mode back to this standalone mode, the mode that I'm going to be wanting you to show, you go Tools, Download, Pit Kit Operating System. And in the folder, um, that in the installation folder, you'll find the device driver that you need to load in to the Pit Kit. So what you're essentially going to do is put a new operating system on it. So the quickest way to find this is to go to over to icon look at the properties and this gives you a folder that folder is, is where the this software lies and in here there is an operating system and that operating system will be loaded so i want to leave that one in um i'm going to leave that one in um mp lab mode so i'm going to revert back to my second one and pull that out i'm just going to push that in there and i'm going to show you exactly the same operation so i'm actually going to just um, rescan that. So I've got two, just to recap, I'm going to check the operations on this one. And I'm just going to show you that I can download that PitKit operating system into here. That's the folder. That is the file I'm looking for. And I'm actually going to put it into a different mode, okay? And I'm just refreshing that code. And it's essentially, it's, it's putting this in standalone mode now. So that's now... Uh, we programmed it. So this one is definitely in um, standalone mode. Um, and in here I can then revert it back backwards and forwards. I, so you have two modes. MP Lab mode or MP Lab X mode. And this standalone mode it is now operating in standalone mode. I know that because I can see this chip called a PIC 18F14K22. I can erase it, uh, etc. And so I've just done a setup. Recap. I've installed the software. I've put it in standalone mode. I've, I've, I've loaded the operating system as required. Okay, let's just pop over into um, let's pop over into my um, Great Cow IDE, and I'm going to load a piece of software. Um, I'm going to write some software for this. The software I'm going to be loading is um, a demonstrator for that actual board. So this this um, is a demonstration piece of code. 
wait a couple of months ago, and this is a piece of code that will actually uh, blink the four LEDs in succession. There are four LEDs um, down here. One, two, three, four. There is a button, and it will. Uh, there is a button which will reverse the flow of these, and there's a potentiometer here. Okay, and this code will actually um, do that. So I'm going to program that now. I'm going to make a hex file by using the IDE create a hex file. So I want to show you now how you how you can program it without changing any of the configurations within um, Great Card Basic. So what do I need? I need the folder. If I take the right hand mouse button on this directory, copy the dir path, directory path, I can come into here and I can select auto import hex and write file. If I insert my folder which I've just selected from within the IDE, right, that right hand mouse button, I can put it in here and here is the board I have, the hex file I have just created and as you can see that's um, a minute ago I can open that and it now uh, is programming that it is it just pro it is just programmed that. Uh, how do I know it's programmed? I'm going to put some power on it, and we can see that um, as I push that button, things reverse. As I change the the pot, it gets a bit faster. I push the button, and it stops. So how do I so how do I reprogram that with ease? So I'm going to come into I'll just set the screen up so we can see it all. I'm just going to change it so that it does something different. Um, when it starts up initially, the value of the um, LEDs is 15 because this is um, the uh, address on port C of these LEDs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to, let me think, number 5 and leave it for 2 seconds. And it's essentially when it boots up or starts, it, those LEDs are going to sit there for two seconds, okay? I'm going to then create a hex file. That hex file, great cow does its funky stuff. Creates a hex file. Pick kit 3, notices the change because I use that auto load. It reprograms it and we can see that I had those two LEDs come up, look. We'll do that again slowly, look. Two LEDs are on, look. And so in here I've just changed the startup sequence. If um if I think about it carefully and put that to six, I can reprogram that. We'll see it happen again. Middle of the screen, the compilation, top right, pick kit three, then just the change, pick kit three, then writes it out, and we can see that I've got those LEDs that are starting. So I'll revert that code back. Save it. And the code is back to as um, the demonstration. Now, for those who want to know, okay, it's a quick question. How how hard is it to change the processor? If I change this to a, another processor, all I would have to do in here is um, check my um, change my chip, check my speed, cut the configuration changes, and re recompile. But I'm not here, not showing that. What I'm trying to show you here is the ease of um, compiling code. So if I want to stop that operation, I now hit the button. I turn it off. It's now no longer loading that uh, code automatically. Um, if I just show you multi-window, then it makes it a little bit easier. There we go. Uh, I'm now in standalone mode. Now, if I wanted to load that file, I would have to manually open it up, write that file. But what I've shown you, by using this auto-import option here, it's automatically going to do it for you. And that's the... Um, that's what I'm trying to show you, is that the auto import is a simple way of getting the pit kit 3 to auto load your file as you're compiling. Okay, and with that, I'll call that a wrap.